Today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Tom Drivis from Appia Energy, a front runner in the critical materials sector. How are you today, Tom? Very well, Tracy. Tom, breaking news everywhere. Everyone's talking about the New York Stock Exchange listing for MP materials. How is that going to affect you, or will it affect you at all? Uh, not at all. I think it's good news. It's great news, uh, and I think it um, bring a lot of attention to Appia. We've got a similar, if not better, project in Canada with uh, high rate rare earths. And we will be about less than 1% of their market cap. So I think um, it's going to be uh, very good for the um, for Appia and for the industry. Of course, many people out there agree with you. One of our experts actually wrote a headline piece about how this will indeed draw more attention to the critical materials sector. And uh, I was reading recently that Jack said that you're probably the best choice for development into a producing rare earth magnet materials mine in North America. And I also read that you stated that Appia could become one of the highest grade critical rare earth producers in the world. So I wanted to start this interview by having you tell the investor intel audience and the critical materials sector why this is indeed true. Thank you. Aussies Lake, the Appia project, uh, which is located in northern Saskatchewan, um, has a, a number of surface and near surface zones, like seven, eight zones, with um, um, a very unusual mineralization. Uh, a lot of the experts uh, basically, when they look at 85%, up to 85% monazite right on surface, and up to 50% um, uh, total uh, weight percent rare earths, uh, they haven't seen anything like it in another project in the world. So. Um, it is quite exciting. Like uh, it's it's unique, and and uh, it's high grade, and it it, uh, it has the right mineralogy. All of the rare earths are containing one mineral, which is monazite, um, and uh, in the right province, in in the right area, and very close to um, uh, uh, pilot plant processing facilities. Well. I noticed getting down to the brass tacks to support that, of course, your exploration and drilling program, I see, is on track in spite of COVID-19. Is that correct? Yes, we're, we're quite excited. Uh, we actually kickstart our exploration program in Saskatchewan in May. Um, we looked at, uh, we explore uh, the Loringer and the east side property for uh, high-grade uranium. And in um, June, we started the first phase of the exploration at Alsis Lake. Uh, we did um, a lot of, uh, uh, we had our geologists uh, doing uh, mapping and sampling because we only have looked at a very small area of the 34,000 acres of the project, the Alsis Lake project. And, and we knew of some other zones uh, within the surrounding area that we wanted to uh, map and, 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 um, and sample. Uh, and in addition to that, this month, uh, we started um, uh, uh, um, an MP, uh, uh, sorry, AMT uh, uh, geophysical survey. Uh, so and this, is, we'll, this is the first phase of the program. The next two or three weeks, we're expecting to start the drilling uh, for the, uh, uh, the Osselect project. Well, you know, of course, you always remind me that you're also a uranium company. And, of course, for all of you out there that may not be aware of this, uranium is also considered a critical material. And you announced in late May that a field crew has started the company's planned high-grade uranium exploration activities in for, what, the Loranger and Eastside properties. Can you tell us how that is going? This program has been uh, uh, completed. We started in May, and and we have completed the program. We are waiting results from the um, all the sampling that we did, and um, we're going to be having res uh, the results uh, uh, coming out shortly. So you know we're analyzing those results right now, and and um, we'll be um, uh, we'll be issuing a news release for that. Usually. As you know, Tom, I like to ask people what shareholders should anticipate for the next quarter, but I'm not going to ask you that today. What I'm going to ask you is uh, 
Matt Bolson recently wrote a story on Investor Intel. He said that your market cap is, and I quote, very low given their super high grades, valuable, critical, rare earths, and location. He says the only possible explanation can be the relatively early stage of the project, end of quotes. Tom, why don't you tell our audience what's happening with your market cap and why they should take a look at Appia now? It's a, it's a great question. Um, we, um, we feel that we've got one of the better projects, if not the best exploration project out there. Uh, we have uh, very high grade, uh, uh, world class grades, uh, all in the right mineralogy, in the right place, next to or very close to um, processing facilities. Uh, we've got seven zones uh, at surface uh, or near surface. Uh, that we know of high-grade mineralization. What we are working and we'd like to, uh, to uh, see next is, is uh, come up with our first resource and, and to follow up with a PEA and basically uh, prove to the market, to the investors, that we've got a viable and, and economically viable project. And um, I think that will, will change. I, as, as you mentioned, as we talked before about MP, um, MP materials uh, uh, market cap, would be about 1.2 billion US. Our uh, Appia's market cap right now is about $10, billion, $10 million US. So that's less than 1% of their market cap. And, and we've got a very exciting and, and very a, a good project that our, the initial grades look much better than the EMP's um, uh, 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 rare earth grade. Well, as always, Tom, it's a real pleasure. And Investor Intel is following Appy Energy and the Technology Metal Show. I know Jack Lifton is following you as well. So you keep us updated. Thank you. Thank you so much.